Hey everyone, this is Nadi Taylor, and author of the fantasy romance novel Given. You're listening to Soul Booking Cool with Jewel B. Welcome to Soul Booking Cool, it's Jewel B. Today's guest is a YA fantasy romance author and two-time Wadi Award winner, including the World Building Award for Given. Given has amassed over a million reads and nearly 90,000 votes on Wattpad. And now the book is a physical copy published by Wattpad Books, which will be available internationally January 21st. She is Nandi Taylor. Hi, Hi Nandi. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So am I saying your name correctly? Yeah, Nandi. Nandi. It's a very nice name. Yeah. Like, would you know the story behind it? Uh, it's just a name my mom really likes. Mm -hmm. So how does it feel, Nandi, to have Given come into physical form after having so much success with the book online? Uh, it's, it's a good feeling. Um, I, I mean, posting the book online was kind of my way to keep myself accountable, um, make sure that I kept writing and I had, you know, people, as it gained popularity, people were asking me, hey, you were supposed to update this week, where's the, where's the update? So that kind of kept me, kept me going. And just to see it grow and gain that following, especially a book, a romance book with a uh, explicitly dark-skinned um, heroine, it was really gratifying to see. Um, and seeing her on the cover and knowing that that book is going to be in bookstores and then, you know, other young dark-skinned girls are going to see that, it's, it's really, really um, exciting and it makes me it just kind of fills my makes me uh, give me a warm tingly feeling speaking of the warm tingly feeling what was, was there any works of literature that gave you that warm tingly feeling when you were coming up um yeah a few i i really i've always been a big fan of uh fantasy uh which is why i'm a fantasy writer today um i'd say when I was a kid, my parents gave me this um, book of folk tales, um, and it's this gorgeous illustrated book published by some um, old Italian press that doesn't put out books anymore. But it had uh, stories from all over the world. Um, so it had, you know, your typical Cinderella and the Swan Princess and whatever. But then it also had um, African folk tales in there illustrated. It had uh, mm. tales from um, First Nations. Um, uh, Inuit folk tales, tales from India, all over the world, um, and that, uh, they would read that to me at night. And when I got older, I would read it myself. It's kind of falling apart now with how much I've read it, um, but that was that was definitely, I think, the uh, the seed. What planted the seed of my my whole love of fantasy? Wow. Okay. So when did you say? When would you say that you fell in love with writing? Pretty young, um, maybe. I think it would have been like eight or so. Every, uh, yeah, we had a creative writing time um, when I was a kid in school and I would, you know, write stories in my notebook. I would look forward to that one hour of creating write, creative writing time. Everybody else hated it, but I loved it. Um, and I would write little stories about like superheroes and Sailor Moon fan fiction and stuff like that. Um, and I think that's definitely where it started. Mm -hmm. Wow. So as you had this love for writing your own, your own stories, did it, did it show to you that you wanted to become an author in the future? Not at the time. Um, it was just something that I really liked to do. I didn't consider making money from writing. I was just a, a kid, right? But I think at the same time, you know, when you, you have parents who are like, you, my parents were pretty practical. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted me to uh, get a job that would actually make me money. Um, not to say that, that, who knows, maybe writing will be that job, you know, um, that'll make me rich. But um, I, I ended up going into journalism, which was kind of my, my uh, consolation prize. And I did enjoy journalism and do enjoy journalism quite a bit, um, especially travel journalism. I think that ties back into why I um, I'm so good at the kind of world building and description um mm. it's because of my my work as a travel writer going places and kind of really having to paint a picture of that uh place on the page um so that people uh get excited and want to visit and it's the same thing with writing a book you're kind of trying to make people feel excited and and almost want to visit the world you're creating 
Yeah. So how is it to be able to describe a world that doesn't exist and bring that story to life, bring characters to life? Do you have a particular process that you use? Do you come up with it in your mind and then put it down on this laptop screen, computer screen, or pen and paper? Mm -hmm. What is your process? Well, I, I often describe my process in writing almost like making a painting, right? Mm -hmm. I'll put down the basics, um, you know, the just kind of block out what the place looks like, what the people look like in my first draft. Then I'll go in and kind of add in more detail, you know, what it smells like, how how do they um, cook, things like this, uh, things that make it feel more real. And I call those like the shadows and highlights, you know. You just go in and kind of layer and layer and layer with each um, draft until you have something that feels real and like you could actually, that you're there when you're reading it. Oh, I like that. You said the shadows and the... The shadows and the highlights, yeah. Yeah, shadows and the highlights. Do you like to write to any music or with the TV on or do you need the room to be quiet? Uh, sometimes I'll just put on like um, Spotify and listen to either, I don't know, R&B top hits or something like that in the background. Or sometimes I'll need it to be, to be quiet. It depends on my mood and, and what I'm writing. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a great mood, for example, how does that look for writing? Um, I think when I'm in a good mood, then I just kind of want to be in the story. So I, I don't want anything distracting me in the background. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'll just sit and, you know, like they say, butt in chair and just write. And do you have, like, how do you overcome writer's block? <laughs> that's, a, that's a question I am fighting to this day. Um, sometimes you, you just have to understand why, what's causing the writer's block, right? Is it because maybe you don't like where you're taking the story? Um, you feel like maybe this character wouldn't really do what you're trying to make them do. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's just that you're stressed and you need to take a break from it. And you need to either work on something else or sometimes not even think about writing at all for a, a few days. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of um, pinpointing, is this, is this because of the story? Um, it, do I not like what I'm writing right now or is it burnout? You know, am I, do I need a break? Right, right, absolutely. So what inspired Given? What is the heart and soul of it, which has been receiving so many wonderful reviews so far? And of course, obviously, you know, people are loving it online on Wattpad and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll, I'll get into a little bit of a description first, because that will kind of inform um, the, the influences behind it. So Given is the story of uh, Yeni, who is a princess from an island uh, tribe. Uh, and her father is very sick. So she goes abroad to this uh, northern empire uh, to enroll in an academy there and try to find uh, a cure for his illness. And then while she's there, she encounters um, you know, culture shock, prejudice, and this brass shape shifting dragon named Weish who claims that they are given or destined soulmates. Um, and it's about kind of her um, experiences abroad uh, and what it was kind of based on uh, at the time, I was trying to parse some experiences I was going through as well, because um, I was living abroad myself uh, in Tokyo at the time as an English teacher, mm. uh, which in and of itself was great. I enjoyed it, but it did come with its share of uh, microaggressions. Um, and mm. so you, you kind of, I was working through that and kind of see Yeni face some of the things that I did while I was abroad. Um, and I had also just gotten out of a pretty bad relationship. Um, and I was kind of, interrogating what what was it that allowed me to get into that relationship in the first place. And I came to the conclusion, it's it's an, a lot of things, but it's a lot of it is the media that I'm consuming. You know, these where am I getting these ideas, problematic ideas about what constitutes romance and love. Um, so I decided to write this story and try to tackle that and challenge some of the more problematic tropes that you see in romance writing. Um, and it wasn't easy, you know, some, sometimes I found in early drafts, I find myself, um, found myself accidentally even reinforcing some of these tropes. Um, but I had a lot of help from readers, readers um, of the early drafts, readers on Wattpad and my editor. And I think that I've, I've nailed it. I finally got it right. So speaking of like what you mentioned with your writing process for Given, I talked to an author. He's a first time author, Malcolm X Bowser. And he, one of the advices that he has for people when it comes to writing is to not try to edit yourself as you're writing. Do you agree with that, Nandi? 
yeah it it slows you down i i and i'm i gotta get over this per- perfectionism and just exactly get get all the the crap out on the page in the first draft you know and then go in later and look at it with fresh eyes and fix it i'd say that's that's a, a good method to follow yeah and do you have other people read your drafts and do you read it out loud <laughs> Uh, I do have a writing group who who reads my drafts, and of course, everybody on Wattpad is seeing it as it goes up, right? So mm-hmm. I get all their comments in real time, which can be good and bad, but for, for the most part, it's been good. It's really helped me um, pinpoint things that I didn't even consider. Um, and I think that that's um, something that a lot of writers uh, could benefit from if they're willing to <laughs> put their ugly first drafts you know, up online and, and kind of have them ripped apart. Um, but I, I really thought I benefited from it. And how did you discover Wattpad? And, and prior to Wattpad, did you share your your literature online? Uh, so Wattpad I discovered back in 2014. And I, I'll be honest, I don't 100% remember how. I was probably just um, Googling, okay. you know, where to put stuff online. I know there were a lot of fan fiction sites around at the time, but I I never been so big into fan fiction aside from my Sailor Moon fan fiction when I was you know yay high. But um, and I started out with just a short novella on there, which also won an award, and that kind of fed fed the ego, fed my made me think, hey, you know, maybe I have some skill at this this writing thing after all. Um, and it was a couple of years later that I decided to start uploading Given and to try uploading a full uh, novel because I'd heard that's the way you really get followers is, is and reads is by uploading a complete full novel rather than something shorter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it worked. So as you po- were posting the updates of Given onto Wattpad, did you start to recognize some of the same people commenting like your fans and your readers? Definitely. So especially <laughs> in the beginning, I had, you know, people who were who were kind of diehard fans and would show up for every chapter. And I, and I really appreciate them. And, and, and to this day, I, I shout them out. But uh, and as the story grew and got more attention, it, it was getting more and more of those, you know, repeat offenders, people who were coming back and leaving their comments and, and kind of salivating, waiting for the next chapter. Did you have given written already in full or were you kind of or was it more gradual as you were updating to Wattpad? So I had a draft written in full um, but I made so many changes to that it was it was uh, really a rewrite that I was putting up and I was writing um, a lot of just fully fully new content from scratch as I was going so it, it could get it could get stressful sometimes trying to keep on schedule. Um, right. But and it was and it was evolving and changing. One as I evolved and changed as a person, but also based on feedback I was getting uh, from readers as well. And how did you develop Yinny? Uh, Yinny, she she I don't know. I think she's she says everything that that I. She's kind of that person who says what you wish you could say. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, she she really just if she believes something she says it she does not hold back um and i love that about her um she always does what she thinks is right and she's kind of just that that hero archetype um and i i love that i think that's something that we need to see especially um with a black female protagonist you know i wasn't worried at all about her being um too overpowered or too too uh what they call a Mary Sue character, which is a, a character that's just um, never does anything wrong. Um, I I really didn't care. I was just uh, I just wanted her to be this wonderful expression of integrity. And and the character is absolutely beautiful, by the way. Um, oh, thank you. Yes, no no problem. Did you did you have a hand at all, like in the in the visual of Yenny? In the visual, um, how did I come up with that? Really, it was, I don't have any one person that I was basing her on. Um, yeah, I just knew that I wanted her to be explicitly dark-skinned and black so that nobody could um, whitewash her, you know, mm-hmm. 
or nobody and, could pretend they didn't know she wasn't black, as has happened in um, in past young adult novels. And it's been quite disturbing to see that, the way people react when they realize that a character they thought was white was actually black. Um, so I said, you know what? My character is going to be very explicitly a black woman, and you're going to, if you don't like it, that's too bad for you. Yeah. And tell us why that is important to you. Like, is, is it, Nandi, is this type of representation just important to you in terms of sci-fi and the world of fantasy? Or is it just in literature in general? Uh, I think we've seen a lot of strides in the last few years in contemporary literature, um, right, with especially things like The Hate You Give. Um, but we weren't seeing that kind of um, representation in fantasy. Um, and especially when I was growing up, I know I didn't see it. Uh, and I think you were asking me earlier, did I ever think that I could be a writer? For a long time, no, simply because I didn't think it was something that Black people were supposed to do. All the fantasy writers were white men, and I obviously am not. And all the characters were, were very white in these fantasy books. Um, but it wasn't until maybe 2015, 16 or so that I started to, uh, to think maybe this is something I could do. And then we started seeing movies like Black Panther um, and things mm -hmm. like this. And, and I thought, you know what, this is, it's my time now. I'm going to put this out there and, yes. and see what kind of reception it gets. Yes, none. Especially because I don't know why anybody would think otherwise, but a lot of black people enjoy speculative fiction like absolutely yeah and it's been hilarious to see uh <laughs> I, I was a big fan of the uh, them thrones uh hashtag on twitter while uh game of thrones was going on i couldn't believe it you know like game of thrones was something i read a few years back and it was the kind of thing you just you kind of read like you know and kept to yourself and then all of a sudden i see all these other black people are enjoying game of thrones just as much as i did and it was amazing and hilarious to see. Um, and you know what, you see, you'd ask me if I thought this, uh, this kind of representation is important. Absolutely. Um, black people deserve to see themselves in these kind of um, mystical, fantastical situations. And especially when it comes to science fiction, to see themselves in the future, you know? You'll often mm. see these, these uh, movies and shows in the future, and there's, there's no like, it, there's no one of color in them. So well, what, what happened? Was there a plague? Like, where did everybody go? <laughs> you know? Right. Do you get those kind of messages from readers who say, oh, you know, thank you, Nandi. You know, I appreciate Yinny. I appreciate Given. appreciate the representation, having a, um, a non-racially ambiguous female protagonist. Mm-hmm. I do, absolutely, and I love it every time. Um, I'll, I'll get comments from uh, readers on Wattpad saying, I've never seen anything like this, a fantasy with, with black characters, and especially a, a black female protagonist who's being you know, pursued by a, a love interest. Um, and I had you know, some pictures as well up on, of, of her sisters, and they were wearing like Nigerian gele, and, and people were like, wow, they're so beautiful. I've never seen anything like this on Wattpad. I, I love it so much. And that was definitely part of what kept me going and kept me and made me decide this is something that I need to keep updating because it's it's healing not only me but other people and, and younger people people coming up um and I hope they write their own stories too and I also have to acknowledge that Kirkus Reviews said this about Given the captivating world building will have readers looking forward to more so how, how does yeah. it feel to you know, this is just one example of the the many comments and ideas that people have about Given. It was, that's great to see. You know, it's one thing um, to be uploading to Wattpad and, and, you know, connecting to readers. Amazing. I love it. But then when a um, big trade publication like Kirkus is saying, hey, this, this girl knows how to write, that's really vindicating. And yes, and where were you when you learned that Given was going to become a physical hard copy trade book? I think I was at, at work um, mm -hmm. and I got an email from Wattpad 
uh, saying they had an opportunity for me. That was it. And could I, you know, get on a phone call? And so I, when I got home, I did. And they said, we, we'd like to offer you this deal to publish your book. We're starting a publishing company. Would you like to see your book in bookstores? And I was like, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's been a very uh, wild ride the last year. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about the publishing industry. I've learned a lot about uh, writing. I've learned a lot about myself, marketing, um, and 2020 is going to be even more lessons, but I'm here for it. What are some of these lessons, some of these advice that you can give someone who is currently writing their mm -hmm. young adult sci-fi fantasy manuscript? Uh, don't tie too much of your self-worth uh, to your writing and what people think of it. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to Put put it out there. Make sure that you're you know doing right by your own people. The, um, make sure that the writing is uh, hitting the audience you want it to hit. Make sure it's something that you're proud of as well. Um, but you can't control what anyone thinks, right? It's gonna go out there. It's gonna get scrutinized by the public, just like anything else. Um, and some people will love it. Some people will hate it. Um, but as long as you're happy with what you put out there. Um, that's all that matters and you need to have something else going on outside of the writing like a hobby you know take time to talk to your family anything but just don't tie too much of your ego into your writing and and whether it's being published or not whether people are reading it or not that kind of thing just write what works for you whatever um, audience it hits that's all that matters what's a piece of advice that you have taken from an author that you look up to or respect <laughs> so it's a piece of advice that i think a lot of people follow uh from the late great tony morrison but it's right mm. the uh, if there's a story that uh you want to read and it hasn't been written yet then you must write it and that's what i've done i wrote the story that i didn't see the fantasy featuring my uh strong um and full of integrity uh female lead full of integrity and uh vulnerability at the same time um and i put it out there and, and people loved it yes they did yes they did and the ones who you know are also going to be joining your your audience and your fandom after reading give it and the physical copy they're going to love it as too what are you now do you think that readers should what what better way is it to consume given do you think would you say like digitally or having the hard copy or it oh, doesn't matter the hard, oh. I, I like the hard copy you know the cover is gorgeous and and it, yes, it's it got a, a wonderful like matte finish to it when you touch it so and it's something about just holding the book and hearing the pages turn you know and just snuggling up in bed at night with this book on your lap that they can't be beat um you know, the dig I, I like digital versions for the sole reason that they take up less space in my apartment, but I love a good physical book when it comes right down to it. Mm -hmm. And speaking of physical books, what are some of your, what are the typical ways that you consume your books? Are you more of a, like going to the library person or buying the books or audio books, mm -hmm. both? But yeah, really, but lately, since you said, yeah. Yeah, lately I've been doing a lot of audio books. Uh -huh. um, I, it, it can be really, it's kind of fun to listen to the way the, the narrator conceptualizes all the different characters, especially if they're a particularly talented uh, voice actor. Um, but at the same time, it does tend to put me to sleep. And then I don't know where I left off. And so I find myself off and scrolling back like, oh, where, when did I fall asleep? What happened? What, what's going on? But it's worth it to me because I really enjoy having the story just like read to me like I'm six again. What, by the way, what is the last book that you read and what's something you can tell us about it without um, giving it away? Ah, uh, okay. So the last book I read, it's called uh, David Mogo, God Hunter by Sugi Davies Okungbo. And he uh, is a Nigerian um, author uh, out of uh, Lagos. And his book is what he calls God Punk. And it's about this um, guy named David Mogo, who is a uh, half god and he lives in a post-apocalyptic Lagos where gods are falling from the sky um and he has to go around hunting and collecting them wow it's so really how great book. 
Okay, I'm going to check that out. I know some of you listeners are going to um, be on the lookout for that as well and check it out. What When people are giving you book recommendations, Nandi, what sells you? What gets you hooked? Uh, a very interesting and different premise, maybe a, something I've never heard before. Of course, I'm always down for fantasy and science fiction. Mm -hmm. um, and characters that sound like they're they're complex and they're going to be going through some stuff and there's going to be some growth and some change. Yes, yes, because I also understand that themes that you like to write about, by the way, include growth, courage, and finding one's place in the world. Yes, that's right. Um, and why are these like things I, important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I was saying before, I a big part of why I wrote Given was kind of to interrogate what was what, what I felt, what I, what was going on with me living as this foreigner um, in a place where I I kind of wasn't great at the language. It wasn't my first language, um, and I very visibly stood out. Um, and I learned a lot living there. Um, but I th I think that's why I like young fiction as well, because um, it often deals with these themes of growth and finding one's place. Mm -hmm. and learning who you are uh, and I think these are things that everybody goes through really throughout all of their lives but it's particularly pronounced um, at this this uh, like during your teenage years those formative years when you're kind of starting to realize that maybe I don't agree with what my parents are saying over here or you start to have your own you start to think critically about the world around you mm, yes I love that because Young adult, it's it's one of my favorite genres as well, and I definitely think it's because of the reasons that you that you mentioned, you know, about mm -hmm. it, it has that coming of age, that realization that, you know, it, it has that going on in it, and that's part of why young adult also they have a big audience of people who are not young adults, but you know, grown grown and everything. Mm -hmm. But w mm -hmm. with that, knowing that they also make up that audience, Nandi, when it comes to writing YA, are you Aside from writing for yourself and the pleasure of writing something that interests you and moves you, do you have both adults and people who are way older or just other age groups in mind when you're when you're writing? I I don't really. Um, I'm writing primarily for the for the girls on Wattpad who are saying, I've never seen anything like this. I I feel so so happy to see myself represented. Um, and I think that that young girl is inside of the the older readers as well. The, you know that young girl or person, uh, whoever they may be. So I I don't think it's necessary to consider um, older readers because they're coming from that that place as well. Well said, <laughs> if I must say so myself. Well said. Can you tell us anything about hidden? Ah yes. This is book two uh, in the series, and it picks up where the events of book one uh, drop off. Um, it's it's going to be, um, the romance will still be there, but there's also a lot more political intrigue in this one. And it's going to be primarily based now uh, back in Amy's homeland of uh, uh, the Moonrise Isles or uh, the Yerba Islands. Mm -hmm. So is this currently available to read, or should... Is it something to look the, forward to? The, so the second um, book, I'm currently uploading it on Wattpad. Um, but if you're reading the novel version of, of Given, it's, it's not going to line up. Because like I said, these are first you know, early drafts that I'm putting up on, on Wattpad, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would recommend waiting. OK, yes. I, <laughs> yeah, and we, we can definitely wait. Anything that's it's, it's worth waiting for. It's worth waiting for. And I hope so, yeah. How have people, like I said, the book is not just out yet, but how, in general, how do you think people are responding and what do you want people really to take away from Given who have not yet read it? Mm -hmm. I want them to um, take away, one, I want them to feel like they're experiencing the world um, through Yanni's eyes and they're. I've, I've kind of set it up as a mirror of the current world that we live in and the current political climate that we have. Um, I deliberately 
uh, left out any, um, even though they, the islands have been colonized by this empire to the north, I, I make no mention of chattel slavery because that's not what we're dealing with currently at this time. But there is still, you know, that uh, kind of um, imperialism and you get those microaggressions and you do get racism. And you don't have to have chattel slavery to have that. Um, and so I think that was, uh, I'm trying to get people to see, just see them a mirror of the world that, that we're living in through this fantasy setting. Um, aside from, and then I also want people to um, see the hope there as well. Um, because the goes abroad, not everything is horrible and terrible for her. It's not a, it's not a, a story about her suffering necessarily, mm-hmm. um, but about um, experiencing um, life in a new place and making making friends there um, and finding support uh, outside of her family. Uh, there's kind of like a, a found family thing, thing going on there as well, um, where she makes friends. Uh, outside of you know her her <laughs> dragon soul made of course, um, and I think that it's a story about it's critical but hopeful at the same time. And on that note, Nandi Taylor, everyone, Nandi Taylor, everyone, thank you so much for talking to So Booking Cool today. I really thank enjoyed you. you. It was a pleasure. Oh, I'm sorry. What are you saying? No, I said thank you for having me. Oh, of course. I would love to talk to you again in the future. You know, there's a lot more yes, that, could, that could be discussed, Anandi. Let everyone know how they can keep up with you, how they can get given, and all that good stuff. Yeah, so um, I've got a website, uh, www.nanditaylor.com. Uh, you can find me on Insta, on Twitter, on WAPA, of course. Um, and my books are available on uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, Indigo in Canada, um, Waterstones in the UK. They're they're all over the place. You guys, definitely check it out. Trust me, you, you you'll be doing yourselves a favor. And thank you to all the listeners. Until next time, so booking cool. Hi, hey everyone. This is Nandi Taylor and uh, author of Given, and you're listening to So Booking Cool. <laughs>